Welcome back to Schools Out Beekeeping. As you can see, I'm not fishing today. I'm actually helping out a friend kind of dump some bees into his hives. I really don't know anything about this, but I am excited as can be to learn about it. Gonna be with Cody McIntyre today. He's the beekeeper. He's the master of all this stuff. Can you tell me a little bit about this, Cody? Yeah, today we picked a beautiful day in uh, spring, early spring to put the bees out. We got a batch of carnolians coming in from Watertown. As you can see, you know, there's a lot of activity going on. The sun's out, it's beautiful weather. It's gonna be a great time. So anything else that you can tell us? I can just say that uh, so far the bees have been pretty well tempered. The queens came in well, and uh, I got my wife out here helping today. All right, sounds good. I'm excited about it. Let's get after it, bud. These are three pound bee packages from Dayton and Son. Uh, you got a queen in here. You got a can of sugar water for the trip, so that way they can uh, have something to drink on the way because they're just bees in here. All they do is they take this package, they put it together, and uh, they got a big leaf blower. They go up to a hive and they take the frame, they blow in three pounds of bees in this hole right here, and then they have a queen in a cage. You'll see this later. That's so that way these bees in this cage can get used to the smell of the queen and then they'll know that she's the ruler of the hive. These bees came from California. They came in April 23rd. They came all the way from California though, a long trip. They made it good. The guy said that there was no, no problems with anything. Once they get all these packages, they'll take them and they put them on a big semi and then they can only travel at night because how bees keep their temperature is if it's too hot, they'll go grab water and then they put that in the entrance of the hive. And the entrance of the hive would be right here. Okay, so what they'll do is they'll fan their wings in front of that, evaporating that water and that'll cool the hive. But since the bees are locked in the cage, they can't, they don't have access to the water. So they have to travel at night. So that way they can cool off. And what do you have up here, Cody? This is supplementing food for the bees. Since it's so early in spring, they don't have anything to eat. So this is just a jar of sugar water. Um, it's two parts sugar, one part water, and then I take all my leftover honey that I have in my five gallon pails and I just put it in there too. Gotcha, so, so you said that because there's no flowers out here, they have to have something to eat right away. Yeah. And that's the way you combat that issue. Yeah, otherwise um, they, they have no food and they'll just starve because they have nothing to eat, so. Okay, and do you leave this out here for like a couple weeks till it's gone or till there's flowers out? Or? Pretty much till the dandelions come. Once the dandelions come, that's gonna be the first real good food that's uh, like a good maintainer for the bees. So uh, you'll see them once the honey comes on, I mean the, the dandelions come on, you'll see them just multiply and that, that whole hive will just explode, so. Well, that's crazy. So, do dandelions make good honey? Yeah, dandelions make great honey and they make even better comb. Great, that's awesome. So we got our carnolian bees here and we're gonna take them, we're gonna put them in the hive. So you take your sugar water off, get everything off the top. What you wanna do is you wanna take one frame out of the middle. Okay, this is honeycomb from last year. Okay, you're gonna leave a space for the queen. Now you're gonna come over to the nuke box you're breaking this queen loose. You can see that metal's moving up and down. You're gonna take the can out. Right away you can see the bees come, okay? You look in here, there's the queen inside of there. See her? Clean this off. There's the queen. Okay, you take the marshmallow and a little tweezers. And you can see there's a wooden cork here. So what you wanna do is you wanna turn this cork sideways. You wanna hold that marshmallow right next to it. So you can roll the marshmallow over like a flap door as you pull the cork out so the queen don't get out. And then you're just putting a little bit of this marshmallow in there. And what this is doing is this is giving the bees time to get to the queen now. So they're gonna try to rescue her and pull her out because she's a queen and the pheromones she's putting off are telling her that she's the boss. So they're gonna try to pull this out and by the time they pull this out they're used to her pheromones and they'll accept her as a new queen. Then I'll just take these two and I'll put them together. And the workers then, they have like a jaw that can eat that marshmallow? Are they yeah. actually eating it away or are they? It's like a mandible. I mean, this is all sugar. It's a marshmallow. So this is basically sugar. So they are eating it a little bit, but uh, it's just that it's not really harmful to them at all because it's just sugar, you okay. know? So, gotcha. 
and then they are they're taking it with their mandible and they're just pretty much taking it out of there to get to her you know sure okay so now we have a space for our bees to go right here okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this jar out and then I'm gonna hand this off to my wife and she's gonna pour the bees in how does she get stuck with this job because <laughs> I'm not as good as dealing with the queen <laughs> okay so I tip it onto its side because there's two latches here that I have to take off so I'm gonna pry my hive tool and I'm gonna just try to pull it over the latch. These are really nicely made because, you know, for their long trip in the semi, if it does hit a pothole or bump, um, it's not gonna easily open up and the bees to get out. So I'm gonna open the flap up and kind of bend it all the way towards me so it stays open when I dump them in. And I'm gonna have that door face towards me. Let them fall out once and then I'm gonna give them a good jerk and get the rest of them out. Perfect. This is and unreal. <laughs> so they're kind of all matted up there, so I'm just gonna give them a little scoot towards the middle because I want them all to go in there. Yep. And then you'll move these frames over, you know, because you don't want to squish or kill the bees, you just want them to have a home. So move these frames over, you take that frame you took out for the bees originally and you stick it in the middle. Wild. And I'm making sure I'm lining up this this part with the matching one so that it goes in nicely all the while doing it slowly and and mindfully making sure that i'm not squishing the bees as i do it you can already see that all those bees are in that hive they're all down there oh. yeah. they know they already know where she is oh, huh? absolutely. Yep. wow that's crazy and they do that all it's like a smell olfactory right yep. yeah yep. crazy yeah, it's not like you and me where we're looking for our uh other you know our or love or whatever they they can smell her they know right where she is that's awesome i just want to kind of show this this is i'm barehanded these bees are crawling all over me this is unreal cody's used to it so yeah. I, he he has i mean this is he's nothing. got the experience but this is brand new to me and i i just find this wild this is crazy being in the middle of all these bees just i don't know he said stay calm and i should be fine <laughs> yeah yeah so like look at this bee right here you can see how it's putting its butt in the air and it's fanning its wings sure. what it's doing is it's cooling the hive and it's releasing pheromones it's marking this hive as its home okay so underneath on the back here you might be able to see there's a little flap right there that's opening up see that little flap of pink okay that is the wings or that is where the pheromones are and these wings are fanning them pheromones out so this hive is this bee is marking this hive as its home Wow. This bee is marking its hive as its home. You can see it right here. You can see that little dot right there in between the black and white is open. That's a pheromone marker. Awesome. That is so cool. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to take this feeder cover. You just put it on there. Okay, and then we're just going to put these jars in and they just got some holes so the bees can put their little proboscis or their tongues in there and then drink the sugar water out. So sometimes these are a little tight because these, these feeders are new, so takes a little muscle in but cool and there we go and then that's a brand new hive and then uh you just gotta come out here once a week maybe and check these sugar water make sure you want to consistently keep the food on there because you want them to think that it's a honey flow just in spring so they're gonna be amping up the hive she's gonna be making new eggs to make it so when the the dandelions do come and the flowers do come they they have all the bees they need to make all the honey they need so you have yours you got a honey bee drinking honey out of this comb there's already honey in there, huh? Yep. And where did this come from, Cody? So this comb came out of the box. When I pulled it out, this was actually attached to the can. Okay, so the bees that were in there made all of this wax and then filled it with sugar water honey. So, so this bee is drinking some sugar water honey here. How long were those bees in that box? I would say that they were probably in there for four or five days. So, so they made that much comb in four or five days. And filled it. You know and they're actually putting honey in there yep. that's insane yep. and it also tells cody that he, these bees are older oh. they know what they're doing well that's good yeah that's... because bees have a life cycle so uh when a bee is born it doesn't make wax right away so bees don't make wax so they're fully matured so cody i'm kind of curious is this honey as good as like the honey that they would make from flowers or because you said it's just sugar water that they're drinking so it's not pollen that they're putting in here. It's just basically sugar and water. Does it taste as good? Well, let's find out. It honestly tastes like nothing. 
Oh, interesting. It, it would say it tastes like a marshmallow, but I've been pulling this apart all day, <laughs> so I would say that this probably tastes like nothing. Interesting. So what if you just fed your bees sugar water? Would they be able to make honey off that? Would you be able to sell it? I mean, they would make something that you would think would be honey, but uh, when you tasted it, you'd be able to tell that there's no flavor in there or anything, you know, so it, you would tell it's not honey. But uh, all this is doing is, is, is supplementing food for the bees. So, I mean, there's nothing around for them to eat right now at all. They don't have a pantry to go into. So this is giving them a pantry essentially. And then once the real food's around, you know, this would be enough to keep the bees alive for a while, but this doesn't have all the vitamins that a bee needs and all the minerals that a bee needs. I mean, a bee is still a creature, so it needs more than just, you know, sugar water. So you can tell how white this comb is, you know, this is brand new fresh comb, okay? And now I'm gonna grab a frame from here. Okay. Look how dark this comb is. See the difference? That's foot traffic. This is older comb. This is just like if you'd be in your house and you'd be walking on your carpet for years. That's why this comb is old. This is brand new. The bees didn't have any dirty feet, nothing. So Brand new, pure white. That yeah, is that's just why it's white because ridiculous. it that's hasn't awesome. been walked on. So why do these, why is this comb all together like that, Cody? I thought like when you make the honey, you kind of pull that apart a little bit. Is that not true or? Well, what you do is you'll take a, a knife and you'll cut it straight across this whole thing. It'll be a bread knife that'll go across the whole thing. So. All that's doing is opening these because when the hot, when the bees do it, they'll, they'll all be closed like this, and that keeps the honey in there. So you'll put it in a big spinner, and it'll spin it out. So when we cut it, the bees come back. They just reform this with their jaws, and and they just make it back into the honeycomb shape. And they they fix it all up. Got it. So, so the less you destroy it, the less the bees have to do. The, that means that the more honey you get, maybe, or yeah, because I mean it's just less work. So they're spending less time working on this, so they have more time to work the fields and make honey. So, you know, if you give them a frame that's already drawn out, that's you're saving, you know, a week of frame. You know, and they can spend that week making honey rather than drawing frames. Awesome. Here's some old brood. Yeah, this looks like some old brood. So this was bees last year in winter that didn't make it. What do they, like, when you stick that frame in there, do they avoid that? What the bees will do, the bees are super clean. So they'll, they'll come and they'll actually open all these up and take these dead bees out and throw them out of the hive um, just to clean up the place. All winter they don't poop in the hive or pee in the hive. They wait till uh, it's, you know, they call it uh, Indian summer day where it's at like 50 degrees in the middle of winter. <laughs> And they'll go out, they do a quick cleansing flight, which is where they just poop, and then they go right back in. So this this shiny stuff in here, is that like... That's like nectar from last year. Oh, interesting. Okay, and then this, this would be some pollen. Okay, and you can see it's different colors, because all pollen from all flowers are different colors. So, I mean, you can look in this frame. This frame's got a lot of good pollen in there, too. You can kind of see those different colors. If you try that, it, it tastes like a, a shock tart. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do another beehive here. So how you wanna break these loose is uh, they all just slide apart. So you gotta bop them like this. The bees love it. Okay, we're gonna come over here. We're gonna loosen this bar up. The queen's in this box. I like to get it wiggling before I open it. it kinda helps out a little bit. Oh yeah, look at that. They just, Queen's in here somewhere. Oh yeah, she's alive. Yes, then you're gonna bring her over here. Okay, I'll push her right in here. You don't wanna put them like this because now when I smush them together, she wouldn't have any room to breathe. So you wanna put her like this. You see that wax forming? I'm gonna put her in and squish her in between the two hives so she don't fall down.
there's still some bees in here. If you put these bees over there, will they find their way back to this hive? Um, they're they're just gonna go with a hive right now because when they were packaged, they were just packaged out of any hive, and then they have a box of queens. So they'll just put one queen in here randomly, fill this up with bees, and then over time they get used to her smell. So right now they really don't have any loyalty to one hive yet, you know. So that's why. You want to shake the bees in with the queen that you want them to stay with. Otherwise, you know, you could put all the queens out and just shake the bees in the air and they would all go into different hives. But this way you get a better average of three pounds per hive for bees. But yes, this, all these bees could go into that hive over there and then, you know, this hive ends up with nothing. Well, Cody said that I could do one by myself. We'll see how it goes. Kind of anxious about it. <laughs> I'll give it a try. He said this. Should this be fully open? Yes. Yep. Just like that, and just then just like kind of yep, and then just kind of angle it so you get them in the middle of the hive. Oh yeah. Nice job. Yep, give her good jerks. There you go. Good, that was a good one. Give her a couple more of those. Nice. Good. That'll work. You just set cool. that in front so the rest of the bees can find their home. How do you feel? A little rush of adrenaline? That's awesome, yeah. It's, it's weird being around this many bees. That's crazy. Yeah, these are all girl bees too. All the girl bees are the worker bees, so. They no. don't. They don't come with any drones at all? No drones because these were overwintered the same as they were in Green Bay, in Wisconsin as they were in California. So the weather wasn't nice enough for them to have drone bees yet. So these they, are all worker bees, all girl bees. And you, they kick the drones out in the fall because there's no room. They just eat a punny. They don't do anything, right? Yep. So the drones, the drones don't have any stingers, so they can't even protect the hive. So they just kick them out. And then in spring, the queen will make new breeding stock of male drone bees. Well, thanks very much, Cody, for letting me come out here today. I had an absolute blast. I know that some of my YouTube followers might have more questions, and I'm hoping to kind of turn this into a series, um, if you're willing to do that. Yeah, anytime, man. I had a blast with you, too. Uh, I'm glad you didn't get stung. Uh, you know, you're a great worker. You're easy to work with. It was awesome, man. I'm glad you had a good time. Uh, if everybody likes this, I'd love to share more videos about the bees. If they have any questions, I got my uh, Facebook page, Big Honey LLC. Uh, you can find it on there. Uh, you can leave comments below on this on this on YouTube. Uh, it's been yeah. a great day. Yeah, any of my subscribers have any questions, make sure to comment because that's the way I'll be able to see it and that's the way we can kind of put this together for the next video. Thank you very much, Cody. Very right, awesome. All right. Big honey. Big honey. Big honey. Big honey. Who are you squeezing? <laughs>